So everyone who knows me personally knows how much I despise Nibiru with all my heart. Obviously, there are some formats where the card is completely broken and you should be main decking it, or there's sometimes there's formats where the card is kind of bad to main deck but good to side deck. As a matter of fact, I'd say that's usually the case, so in this video I will especially be talking about the game on aspects of the card. I mean, a card can't suck to draw if the odds of drawing it when you don't want to draw it are 0%, kind of makes sense, right? Now, Nibiru is another one of those hand traps that you really want to be drawing in your opening 5, and it can be dead against a lot of decks, unfortunately. But when it does work, its power level can be astronomical and sometimes even better than Droll and Logbird. Because Droll doesn't really make your opponent lose anything, it just delays your opponent, whereas Nibiru can literally make your opponent go like neck 10. Yeah, I might be exaggerating just a little bit, but you get the point. But again, when Nibiru does not work, it's really really bad because it either just doesn't do anything because you can't activate it, or it resolves to just not really do much. Like the Trillaments deck, for example, they are not necessarily losing to Nibiru if they get Nibiru because they don't even have to make any negates. They can just end on like a Lido Heart and Sharon, and even even if you nip them, they can still trigger a lot of effects. Now, for some reason, I keep seeing decklists of people running Nibiru without giving too much thought into it, and I really don't think this is the way to go. Now, when you deck build in Yu-Gi-Oh!, one of the most important things is to take into account your bad matchups and try to prep to beat them. For example, if you're playing a deck like Fire King, it's really important to be able to beat Unchained because that's kind of like your worst matchup in a way. I mean, they do exactly what you do, but better because they all float immediately and also they have Caesar to insta-win against you, whereas you don't really have too much to insta-win against Unchained. Now, with that said, because of the way people are currently playing Unchained, they are randomly playing into Nibiru big time and you could actually capitalize off of that. It's not really that Nibiru is good against Unchained because I've already proven that this was extremely wrong in the past, but it's really good against Unchained players. At least most Unchained players or a lot of them. And like I said, you could take advantage of that and steal a lot of games that you have no business in winning either at regionals or on the Swiss rounds of YCSs or sometimes even like early on in Top Cut. But once you start getting paired against the pro players with hundreds of hours of experience, you start realizing that Nibiru is less good than you thought it was. Therefore, all the advantage that you thought you had would go down the drain, but the disadvantage still remains. Because, you know, it's really easy to think only about the positive aspects and the reason to play a card, but uh, at what cost? You are now playing up to three cards that are extremely bad against Purely, Centurion, Labyrinth, Flunderese, Chimera Branded, Despia, the list goes on. Now against Dragon Link, for example, it's really similar uh, to Unchained, as in the deck should not be losing to Nibiru, but you're always going to find people randomly playing to Nibiru for no reason whatsoever. I mean, in my head, it's really easy to just rush Hieratic Seal in 5 summons and call it a turn, but uh, I guess that's rocket science for some other Dragon Link players. And it's not like I can say that Nibiru is good against Rescuees, because if it's your only hand shop, they can still make like a Turbo Ants in 4 summons or less, and you're still screwed there. Like, even if you resolve Nibiru later on, it's really not that good. Honestly, I straight up struggled to find any real applications where Nibiru would be completely insane in this format. As a matter of fact, I actually think Droll has way more applications than Nibiru. And honestly, in terms of power level, they're very similar. Now you might be thinking, but Yak Sign, worst case, you just main deck them, who cares? Yeah, well, it doesn't really work that well, unfortunately. Again, taking the Far King example against Unchained, if you have to add Drolls to your main deck now on top of Nibiru, you're kind of like unsolving your deck's issues. Like, you're adding a card that's kind of good against a certain deck, but then you're adding another card that's like extremely bad against that deck. Mm, thinking. Honestly, the Unchained deck almost never loses to Droll, except like maybe sometimes when they have to rely on Prosperity and Abomination's Prison. So more often than not, when you Droll an Unchained player, you're almost hand-looping yourself for one. That's like really sad. And even if you draw Droll plus Nibiru, it's not even like a good combination of hand shops because they kind of anti-synergize with each other. The goal of Droll is to stop your opponent from doing too much. And the goal of Nibiru is to punish your opponent for doing too much. Since you're always getting drooled before you get nibbed, you're usually not going to be doing much anyways. So usually when people get drooled, they're not even making big boards anyways. They're only passing on like three or four summons and that's it. So imagine you drool someone and then that person actually makes an IP Masquerina plus a monster in four summons, obviously. And then you have a dead Nibiru, you have four other cards in your hand, and you basically can't really out like uh, two interruptions. And that would be really sad because we all know how dog shit decks are at going second nowadays, even though they're very resilient when they go first. Now, I also very often hear the argument that apparently Nibiru plus Imperm is extremely good against everything. Now, I will say this was true for the longest time, but honestly, it only really applies to combo decks. The goal was to pretty much let them do whatever they want, and then at the end of the combo, you go Nibiru, and then they might negate it with something like a Crystal Wing or a Balon or whatever, and then you Imperm there, and they kind of just lose. But this is no longer really relevant because all the best decks of the current format are mid-range decks. You probably are trying to use your Imperm before your Nibiru anyways because everyone can start applying pressure very early and with very little resources. 
They can make a lot of interruptions with only one or two cards, which means that uh, more often than not, your Nibiru is not going to be enough and you will have to rely on something else. And again, because of the fact that they only play with one or two cards, they have a lot of space for hand shops. But yeah, it sucks to say, but sometimes the right thing to do is just to play the most generic and applicable hand shops. Everyone can agree on the fact that Ash and Imperium are typically the best hand shops in the format because they're very generic and safe to play. And then we also have Effect Veiler, which is kind of like a relative to Imperium, so at this point we're already at 9 hand shops. You could play like one extra set of hand shops, but I don't recommend like two extra sets. 15 hand shops is definitely overkill, and again, you might start breaking just because you play way too many. And the thing about hand shops is that they have very diminishing return on investment because if you draw way too many and your opponent can hard make interruptions through them, they do just literally nothing. And like I said, if you're playing Nibiru over another hand shop, you are running the risk of drastically worsening like an average matchup just in order to slightly improve a bad matchup. Anyways, now that I gave Nibiru all the roasting that it deserves, it is now time for me to explain why I think it's a really good card in the side deck still. So first of all, you now have total control over who you will be siding Nibiru against. So the card should never do nothing and should always be a good draw. Except if it's your sixth card. Story of my life. Second, Nibiru will have a much higher likelihood of catching your opponent off guard. At least depending on your strategy. Because if you're not main decking it and your opponent doesn't see it anywhere in like a bunch of the cards in your deck if the game drags on for a long time, then he might actually want to believe that you might just not play the card whatsoever. And that means that if he forgets about the existence of the card, he might play into it on game 2 and 3, which is going to be really bad for him. But that's not even the best part. I, alongside quite a lot of my friends, strongly believe that Nibiru is especially good when you are going first. The reason for that is because now that you're going first, your opponent no longer has the luxury of playing around your Nibiru, now he has to worry about your end board instead. And also, going second in Yu-Gi-Oh! makes you kind of require you to play like your full hand out, whereas if you're going first, you only need to invest like one or two cards in order to play. You will have a massive advantage using Nibiru to ensure that your opponent has absolutely no recovery even if he ends up breaking your whole board. Because at this point you can actually use your board as a decoy instead of like an actual threat and then use the Nibiru as a real threat. This is where being a good player and being very patient can pay off because you can actually tell when is the perfect timing to play Nibiru. It is a particular skill that only works when you have total control over the card which again only functions post game 1. Otherwise, you will unfortunately run into the situations where you draw Nibiru when you don't want to. So yeah, again, even though I said that I didn't really like Nibiru too much and I do believe that it still doesn't really solve a lot of your issues, at least on game one, there are sometimes also situations where you can be immune to the drawbacks of Nibiru whatsoever. For example, if you're playing Labyrinth, you don't really care even if you draw Nibiru when you're playing against a deck that doesn't lose to Nibiru. Worst case, it's gonna be your discard for the furnitures because you have to discard a card anyway, so it's fine. Not to mention that Nibiru actually interacts really nicely with the furnitures because you can actually use both at the same time. And if you're playing a runic based strategy, I mean worst case you just discard the Nibiru with the Huggin and then you get your Fountain and who cares. Basically, if your engine forces you to discard cards in order to function, then you're good to go with Nibiru, you can main deck it, who cares. But if your deck is really fragile and very linear and very predictable in its deck building and its execution and everything, I don't really recommend playing Nibiru in the main deck. Anyways, that's all I had for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and let me know your thoughts about Nibiru in the comment section below. And I'll see you guys very soon. Peace.